too little short for a stormtrooper. <laughs> What's up, nerds? Welcome to another episode of the Multiverse Report. Uh, we are recapping the week's nerdy news from Keystone City to Kunlun and everywhere in between. My name is Mike Gibson. With me as always is Steve Haller. What's up, Steve? Well, not a lot this week. Not a lot. <laughs> we'll just throw very, it right out there. It's pretty, yeah. pretty uh, sparse in the world of nerd news. Very sparse. A couple stories plus a kind of a bigger story that we forgot to cover last week. The Eisner nominations came out last week and... I don't know how we can even call ourselves a self-respecting uh, comic book related uh, podcast and that we did not cover the Eisner nominations last week. We just talked about the DC swimsuit issue instead. It um, is true, though, uh, to our credit, within like three minutes of the podcast ending, you texted me and said, holy hell, we forgot the Eisner nomination. Yeah. How did we do that? Um, so we'll go over those and plus uh, stick around for Steve and Mike's summer movie preview. Mm -hmm. We're talking about. This is um, a Memorial Day weekend as we're recording this on Sunday night of Memorial Day weekend. And, uh, you know, unofficially kick off to summertime, I think, in a lot of uh, people's minds. So uh, and as we've talked about many times in this podcast in the last few months, there are a hell of a lot of, um, I don't know, nerdy related movies, genre films coming out this summer. Right. So uh, we're kind of going to go over, each of us is going to share our top three of uh, the ones we're most excited about. And then we're going to kind of run through not everything that's coming out, but everything that could be tangentially related to the interests of people that would listen to a podcast like this and, right. and the interests of us who would talk about things on the podcast like this. But first, before we get to the Eisners, before we get to the summer, summer movie preview, we got a couple Marvel things to talk about here. Uh, First of all, this kind of ties into our new recurring segment, not Flash Watch, but Strike Watch, the WGA strike still happening. No updates from anybody mm -hmm. on any progression uh, of negotiations or anything like that. And I feel like that's how it's going to be for a while. And this week we learned officially that Marvel's Thunderbolts film has halted production due to the WGA strike. They were out three weeks out from shooting. Um so they're getting pretty close, but uh, had to halt production. It joins uh, Marvel's Blade and also uh, the Wonder Man series. They've all been paused due to the strike. Now, this is not surprising to me at all, considering the numerous reports and stories and you know words from actors' mouths that say yeah. how the MCU has an issue of writing movies while they're being made and making changes you know when they're almost done and making last minute changes to everything from script to story to uh character beats to uh you know visual effects so if that is the if they're still if they're still you know utilizing that uh technique which i don't think is the best technique ever um certainly has had more meh to blah uh, from the mcu <laughs> yeah. recently uh for me anyway than uh than hits um but anyway not surprising that the strike is halting marvel stuff if if that's the way that they're going to continue to make movies um instead of just you know writing them ahead of time <laughs> um the other uh on the opposite end of the spectrum we got news that deadpool 3 has officially begun filming which I find to be questionable. So I think, Steve, you mentioned a few weeks ago when we first started talking about the strike, how um, Ryan Reynolds, um, known for coming up with improvised lines on the spot, um, can't do that while filming Deadpool 3 while this writer's strike is going on. He is a member of the WGA. He's got a writing credit, I think, on at least Deadpool 2. I don't know if he got one on the first one, but... Um, right. He uh he has a lot to do with you know the overall production of those movies in general, but yeah, he does a lot of improvising. He's a funny guy, comes up with stuff on the spot. Not allowed to do that on Deadpool three. So I feel like if there is a Marvel movie that should be 
paused right. for the WJ strike. It's this one. It's Deadpool three. Like, don't you want to wait until you can be funny and make put those things in the like make it the best movie that you can? Otherwise, you're just you're stuck with the script. And I'm sure the script is good, but it's also a script that has had like you know three different teams of writers come and go, and it took a while to hammer it out. It took a while to get it right, and like you know, like so many reports are saying, like there's there's always writers on set in case a line needs to be changed or yep. whatever. And especially in this case, when Ryan Reynolds isn't isn't free to be, you know, free wheeling Joe free cracking Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds. Like, yeah, exactly. That's his whole shtick. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The the whole thing is like it, it makes no sense. I've got a hunch that in about three months, four months, whenever the strike subsides we're going to be seeing a whole lot of Deadpool three and reshoots because yeah. well, like, yes, you get the footage, but you're either going to, there's either going to be a hell of a lot of like Reynolds in a booth doing ADR or like something to bring Ryan Reynolds back into this movie. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm sure he's in it. You know, I'm sure the flavor, the Ryan Reynolds flavor is already in the right. script because it was written for him with him in mind. And, you know, he has final approval, I'm sure, on what he's going to do. But um, you, you bring up a good point about ADR, uh, which people don't know. ADR stands for additional dialogue recording, which is done after the fact. Uh, sometimes you can spot it in a movie. Sometimes they don't do it all that well. Like it's clearly they're, they're looking at the back of a character's head while they're talking and the audio is like a, just not quite blended. doesn't sound exactly like mm -hmm. the rest of the dialogue. Um, that's ADR. But in a case like Deadpool, if he's wearing that mask, you can ADR lines all day long mm -hmm. and not have it really be a problem because you can't see his mouth moving. <laughs> so um, it's a good point. They could be doing a lot of ADR or I think you might be right about that. The other uh, the other possibility is that in a few weeks or a few months, if the strike is still going on, we hear that Deadpool three has halted filming. Right. You know, they'll get what they can um, get out of it. And then, you know, yeah. maybe for all we know, maybe there's a bunch of scenes that there's not like Ryan Reynolds script in or yeah. you know, or TJ Miller for that matter, because he's this of a similar ilk off the cuff. You know, any right. of any of these guys, like maybe it's strictly Colossus scenes they're filming or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, really anything that's still in production right now, they could be just doing all the action scenes first, you know, yeah. or doing all the dial the lighter dialogue scenes first. Um, obviously, with a Deadpool movie, there's not a ton of light dialogue scenes because he's a he's a, a fan of the quip. But um I mean, he uh, didn't you know, get nicknamed the Merc with the Mouth by not spouting off at yeah, all points. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't think that I've heard anything. I mean, none of the James Gunn stuff is in production other than Creature Commandos, right? The cart, the animated series. I believe that that's the only thing we know is working in, on. Yeah. And animation, you know, you're not doing a whole lot of I think with animation that your script is pretty much set because like you have to record the dialogue well in advance of it being animated. I even think, right. Isn't that how they do it most of the time? Cause they have to animate to like the performance. Right. To what's being so, said in the yeah. script. So yeah, I'm sure there's times when it's opposite of that, but right. Um, I'm just thinking of other like, you know, DC and star Wars. Like, uh, I mean, I guess James Mangold has to stop writing his origins of the force movie for star Wars yeah, and, and swamp thing, you know, like I'm sure like, you know, but nothing is officially in like production that has to be shut down. I'm sure writers have not are stopping writing. I don't think James Gunn is making any more tweaks to the Superman script. Um, but he can do things like story. I think I saw that he was storyboarding it, you know, so he could do that, but he yeah. can't uh, tweak any lines or anything until the strike's over. So um, I'm sure anyone that uh, is standing in solidarity with the writers is going to find is going to do everything else they possibly can to get their projects moving forward, except uh, rewrites or writing or tweaking or anything like that. But yeah, no. And I'm at this point, I'm still mildly curious if you're not standing in solidarity with the writers, what are you doing? Like, I feel like, I feel like you and I would both be surprised about the number of people who don't understand how hard it is to write 
a movie. <laughs> I feel like there's probably yeah. a lot of people out there that don't think writers deserve anything more than what they already have. Um, because, you know, like, uh, you know, like we're going to talk about and when we're doing our summer movie stuff, we're going to talk about box office predictions and stuff like that. And, you know, we are looking at it from people who look at this stuff every week and talk about it every week. There's people out there that don't know anything about Ezra Miller controversies <laughs> or things like that. You know, that's just like, oh, wow, superhero movie. I'm in. You know? Absolutely bless them. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. I know for real. Anyway, sometimes so I wish uh, I didn't know about Ezra Miller controversy. <laughs> uh, sometimes I wish I didn't know about a lot of the stuff that we talk about in this podcast and I can just go and like very true like how, how often does that, any behind the scenes stuff affect my viewing of it like how much did people that still complain about you know solo if they didn't know about all the behind the scenes stuff mm -hmm. uh would they uh, would they be complaining about it now you know yeah. same with Rise of Skywalker or whatever you know like I don't know um Moving from something not in production to something that has been in production for quite a long time, <laughs> and we finally got um, a really good look at it. Steve, did you get a chance to look at this trailer? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, we got the an official gameplay trailer. It's been a while since we've talked about a video game on this mm -hmm. show, I feel like. It has. Um, there was a stretch where they were like announcing game and game and game and game. Yeah. And yeah, we talked about it a lot, a and then it's been, you know, we've been we've been in a bit of a down period for a bit here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, except Jedi Survivor, but we haven't. Which we I really did just finish. You finished it already. I did. Wow, I just started it last night. Well, I also bought it on release day, so. Ah, uh, yeah. And didn't yeah. like I I went whole hog. I did not side quest. I did not do anything. It was just oh, like, okay. I'm going for this, nice. mostly because I didn't want to avoid spoilers for the rest of eternity. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, but anyway, speaking of Marvel games, we got the gameplay trailer, which is 12 minutes long, by the way. Yeah. For Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. Um, first Spider-Man game came out in, like, what, 2000 and... PS4, so who knows? It was at least two years pre-COVID? Yeah, I gotta think it was 2018. That uh, sounds right. Maybe. Uh, it was a while ago. And we got the it's, but it's hard to remember because we have the Miles Morales game, um, a couple years later. Which 2018. Was like a, yep. 2018. Um, and uh, holy wow! Like the end. Uh, I mean, spoiler alert for the end of the um, original Spider-Man game. There's a uh, symbiote, a black suit symbiote, venomy tease mm -hmm. at the end of that game. And um, holy wow! This uh, Spider-Man Two trailer certainly confirms the presence of a black suited symbiote wearing Peter Parker um, as he is smashing his way out of a basement um, web slinging with it. It's just like, he's clearly more like aggressive. Uh, I thought, I thought this gameplay, this trailer looked incredible. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it speaks a lot to how far, um, you know, game graphics have come when, it starts off in what is clearly a cutscene, but then when it slides to the gameplay, it still looks the same exact quality <laughs> as yeah. the cutscene did. There's no discernible difference at yeah, all. Yeah, it's kind of crazy just to, like, if you played the first one, you understand, like, they made it look good. Like, they, yeah. they made it look real good for this. Like, they, yeah. I'd assume they use the same engine. I mean, it's still, you know, you're swinging through New York, you're doing your thing. Yeah. But, like, they they upped their game. It was it was downright impressive. Yeah, um, and it looked like you can go to Queens in this one. It looks yeah. seems I think it's it's Manhattan like the first one, but also a borough, which is cool because it gives you different environment to swing around. I saw some people like mad that it was like the same map. I was like, well, what do you change? Haven't... How do you change New York City? Yeah, exactly. How do you change New York City? And also, I don't want Spider Man somewhere else. Like, right. I don't want him swinging through like la or whatever <laughs> like right. no he's new york character that's where i want him spider-man leaves new york city for random things and then comes back to new york city that's what he yeah, does Yeah, exactly that's where he lives where do you want daredevil not in hell's kitchen no right yeah um and this one's it starts well i guess it starts out with a, a cutscene of craven yeah in the jungle which looked awesome and set him up as a very menacing 
villain. Uh, spoiler, alert, spoiler alert. Craven is not on my uh, top three list of movies to watch this summer. I mean, it's not coming out this summer, but you know what I mean. Well, that's why. We'll have to do a fall <laughs> movie preview, too, and then maybe... <laughs> it will not be on there as well. <laughs> <laughs> then it can be cut from that as well. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, Craven looks terrifying, and then, uh, yeah, Peter's busting out of, like, a basement of a house in maybe in Queens, I guess, because he's in a neighborhood. And then it does a super cool thing where he goes, oh, it's over on the other side of manhattan i'm not going to get there in time and he calls miles and then mm -hmm. the game switches from peter to miles and i think that's genius and yeah. when you're miles you've got ganky in your ear just like you do in the game and um right your different skill a, set and yeah, yeah it's a cool way to highlight both characters and keep them both in the game awesome and uh even when you are in the manhattan area like this trailer shows them uh they're like chasing boats I'm like the Hudson river, They're like swinging, using like cranes that are over the water to like swing and stuff and jump from boat to boat. Like that's awesome. Like that's so cool. And it's something that fits within the environment of Manhattan Island. Yeah. Um, but is something that we haven't done in the previous two games. So that's yeah, awesome. I just, I could not get enough of this. And I, I loved that. Cause when I saw that it was 12 minutes, I was like, is this going to give too much away? And there's just a tease of Craven. You didn't see him again. And you get plenty of black suit, but you don't get Venom. Right. And you don't see how Peter gets the black suit, which mm -hmm. I was glad about. Like, that's something that I want to experience in the game uh, itself. So, well, and still... I, saw, I saw written down too, there was some, I can't remember what I was reading after I saw it. Might, it might even have been like the YouTube comments, but there was one point where Peter saves somebody, like, swings mm -hmm. in, saves them, does the standard Spider Man heroic thing. And then, like, throws them to the ground. Yeah. And they they did a good job of, like, the symbiote is doing its thing. And, like, he's behaving not like Spider-Man, but still yeah. doing his Spider-Man thing. And I think they're, if that's any indication, they're going to nail that aspect of it, which is huge. Yeah, for sure. And they even they end it with Miles questioning his yeah. behavior. Um and even, Peter even like kind the vocal, of dismissing even, it, and yeah, yeah, and even the voice performance of the actor that does Peter, you can tell he's like more aggressive and gritty and upset, yep. and like like yeah, okay, they're do they're really doing this, which is great. Um, and after Spider Man Three, which is a terrible movie, and after the Venom movies, which are also bad movies, well, Spider Man Three um, is a great trilogy shoved into one movie. <laughs> ha, yeah, um. After those two, I it's been a while since I've been excited about the possibility of a black suit Spider-Man yeah. Ven symbiote Venom story because we haven't gotten a good one in a really long time. It's been a bit. So it's been a bit, but this did it for me. I'm pumped, pumped. Um, it's almost like if you adapt the stories in a way that makes sense, people will be excited about them hmm. instead of making movies about Spider-Man villains without Spider-Man in them. Hmm. There Weird. you go. Weird how that works. Go figure. Speaking of Spider-Man 3, uh, our last bit of <laughs> proper news this week uh, comes from a rumor that was uh, heard by uh, Jeff Snyder on the Hot Mike podcast in talking about Marvel uh, films, which are, again, I'm sure this is... No exception, I'm sure Avengers Secret Wars is also um, not being really worked on right now. Uh, but according to the Hot Mike podcast, they were talking about potential directors for Avengers Secret Wars. They have not announced one. They announced one for Kang Dynasty. Avengers Kang Dynasty is going to be directed by uh, Dan Daniel or Dustin Daniel Cretton, the yep. guy that did Shang-Chi. Um, and there was a, a slight bit of rumor that he wanted also to do Secret Wars, and they um, are leaning away from him because they thought that would be too much overlap and too much to put on one person because they're both giant movies and coming out within a year of each other. Right. <laughs> as of right now, insane. Um, according to the Hot Mike podcast, Marvel is looking at Sam Raimi uh, to direct Avengers Secret Wars. He is on the short list along with. Ryan Coogler and John Watts. Um, Jeff Snyder 
describe these three directors as being um, Sam Raimi being the the like the most experienced director that they've had in the MCU. Ryan Coogler making uh, Black Panther, the movie that they're most proud of being in the MCU. And John Watts, who uh, they love and has made a trilogy of Spider-Man movies that have all done very well box office wise. And they originally had him on Fantastic Four. Right. Um, that so also, they, uh, if he if he is actually in the running, that does also kind of mean that didn't end on a bad blood note or anything. Like, yeah, right. So Yeah, because he left to do Star Wars. Oh, and speaking of Star Wars, Jeff Snyder also mentioned that he, if he said if it was him and he thinks they might have done this, if this was going to be the ending of something, then they should go back to where it all began and get John Favreau to do it. And he thinks that they might have done that, but John Favreau is just locked into Star Wars for the foreseeable future and right. doesn't have time to do anything else. Yeah. Um, that would happen. So, so. Steve, uh, between these three, Sam Raimi, Ryan Coogler, John Watts, which of those three would you rather see direct Avengers Secret Wars? Um, awkward pause now because that's tough. That's real tough. It is. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I know Coogler would do a great cinematic job of it. I don't mm -hmm. know if he would end up taking it too seriously. Like, most of the tone of Black Panther seems to be, you know, in that serious vein. Secret Wars, yeah. there's some weird shit going on. Yeah. And I don't know if it's Raimi weird. Right. But it's it's definitely more than Coogler weird. Like, if they bring in Battle World and they do the whole thing like... like I know, they would yeah. Do, like, it seems crazy that they would do that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so... It seems like a lot. <laughs> right. And then, like, the Hickman run, like, that was... Like, at that point, Doom is there. And I, I don't know. I almost like part of me, it, it all depends on how they adapt it. Yeah. Like if they lean into the weird, then Raimi is your guy. If they go middle of the road, then Watts is a solid choice. I think Watts is the safest choice for right. them out of these three. And then if you go serious and like want to make a cinematic movie, which still doesn't make sense with Secret Wars, um, <laughs> like then go Kugler. Yeah, I feel like I don't think Ryan Coogler would want to do it for some reason. It seems like yeah. too much. It seems like he seems to be like a smaller, uh, like heart, like he's he's got that Wakanda thing, and it's like this tight story that is working yeah, within and itself, and yeah, it's like character focused, right? More and Avengers has to be like spectacle. I mean, yeah, throw as much character as you can, but you know, like the, uh, like the the gauntlet that Feige, Kevin Feige, is going to throw down for both of these movies, as far as like this has to happen, this has to happen, and this has to happen. You know, like one of those right. fit all these things into a box because you know these are all the things that are going to happen in the movies leading up to this, and so therefore you have to deal with all this stuff. Deal with it. Um, it's going to be huge. And I don't think Ryan Coogler wants to deal with all that. I think Ryan Coogler likes to have his little cast of characters and he does an incredible job. And I think he could, I think he could, I think if he made Avengers Secret Wars, it would be great. I think he would probably make the best movie. Oh, a hundred. Yes. Yes. If you're looking but for I don't, pure cinema, like this is a good movie. A yeah. hundred percent Coogler's your guy. But I don't think he wants to deal with the headaches and the notes that would come from Feige and Marvel and Disney mm -hmm. on an Avenger on an Avengers movie, right? Because they've kind of let him cook for both those Black Panther movies. Yeah, and he crushed the first one, so yeah, yeah, do what you want with the second one, you yeah. know. But yeah, you know, I, I got. I don't think like with the second one, they probably were like, "All right, Namor is the bad guy. Figure it out." Yeah. Um, but for Avengers, there's going to be a lot more red tape yeah. to wander through, and I think Raimi. He's the only for me. Yeah. Did I tell you that I recently watched rewatched Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? I, I don't no, remember if I said that no, on this I, podcast. No. I it's been a while since I rewatched any Marvel anything, and I think it was in April sometime I rewatched Doctor Strange two and Werewolf by Night. 
Nuera Finite, so incredible. Still yeah. loved it so much. Doctor Strange 2, I definitely saw a lot, like a lot of cracks in it that I didn't necessarily feel the first time. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally kind of think that Sam Raimi is the only reason that I like that movie at all. I think. Um, I think that was a reason why I ranked it, rank it as high as I do, is just the Raimi ness yeah. of it, and it, it fit a Raimi movie, like what yeah, they were the, going the, for. The parts of it where he is allowed to do his thing are great and you can tell that it's him and it's great but there's yeah. so much like again you can tell there's like just marvel this has to happen kind of stuff and it also doesn't really make sense like it kind of undoes wandavision which i thought was incredible and she's kind of made peace with the darker side of herself at the end of wandavision and then all of a sudden she hasn't anymore it's just, i don't know it's kind yeah. of whatever uh so I think Raimi would do a fine job, but I think John Watts is their guy out of these three. I think John Watts has shown that he can deal with a lot of weirdness in right. like No Way Home, which again, I don't love that movie either, but um, that's more of the dot connecting and um, you know tap dancing across the high wire act that you kind of have to do in order to do a, an Avengers movie. So right. I think... Which Out which multiverse three, movie do you go for? You know what I mean? That's, yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. But I can't picture anyone but Sam Raimi handling, like, if they brought it in, <laughs> if they brought the actual Secret Wars story in of, like, who handles Mr. Sinister? <laughs> and, like... Yeah. Like, I... Can you picture Sam Raimi writing Sinister? That would be... That would be perfect. It would be. But... Here it we would are. be, and I keep I keep forgetting that it's possible that by this time the X Men will be able to be in this movie. Right, <laughs> like, I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, like that possibility. But yeah, when you go back to like even Hickman's Secret Wars, you had like the Braddock family, you had Sinister, you had Hyperion, you had like all sorts of uh, everyone was there. Yeah, Future Foundation. Yeah, beyond the yeah. Sam Ra Sam Raimi handling the Beyonders would be awesome. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it feels the, the difference in those three directors could not be more stark for sure. Yeah. So yeah, we'll yeah. see, we'll see who lands it and where they, what direction they go. And I think a lot will be told to us on the tone of that movie by the director. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point. That's a very good point. So, um, and I agree with you, uh, speaking of big, uh blockbuster films we're gonna do our summer movie preview i should have written a theme song for it so you can play it right now mm. well we decided to do it roughly 20 minutes before the pod so yeah, yeah. true <laughs> <laughs> or at least doing it in this fashion should i say right so um got a list here of the the big kind of blockbustery, not every movie that's coming out this summer, but the, like the big blockbustery genre kind of appealing films that are coming out June, July, and August 2023. And Steve and I have our own top threes that we are the most excited about seeing. We are going to go through right now, and then we're going to go through everything else, kind of touch on, you know, feelings, thoughts, and all that. Now, this is very hard for me to make a top three out of these movies uh, yes it was it was weirdly difficult yeah because and you want to i feel like there's many that could change yeah <laughs> like and i had a moment's notice but i just went with my gut yeah so yeah. i may have hedged bets on at least one because i know one is going to be in your three. <laughs> oh, sure so I, I definitely yeah. gamed the system slightly just to to talk a little bit more about a different one okay but uh, I guess okay. with that, I will fire away with my number three that I'm about 90% right. sure is not on your list. All right, do it. Last Voyage of the Demeter. Whoa! Really? I don't know why, but I am extremely intrigued by this movie. Wow. Not at all, at all what I was I had, thinking of. I, I had a hunch you had that nowhere near your radar, well, on your radar, but like, Nowhere near I mean, that top three or expecting me to have it in the top three. That is a movie that I would like to see for right. sure. But definitely, if I had to choose one over the other, then that would be a while before I chose that one, I think. Yes. Um, 
for those of you who don't know, Last Voyage of the Demeter is a story of... Demeter is the boat that brings Dracula from Europe or Transylvania or London, wherever, over to America. Um, and in the story, um, the boat goes up in the harbor and everybody on it is dead. And nobody knows why. Um, mm -hmm. But this movie is going to show us what happened on the last voyage of the Demeter. So yeah, it's a Dracula based movie. on a sing basically a single chapter in the in Bram Stoker's Dracula in the book. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, it's a Dracula movie that takes place on a boat. Right. Which I think is pretty cool. A horror movie on a boat uh, about yeah. Dracula. Like. Yeah. I don't. I like. I said. I have no idea why. But since I found out this movie was going to be released. I was like, yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm in on this. Um, have has there even been like a trailer or a teaser or anything? I have not I don't seen know. anything on it, which is wow. part of what is like <laughs> driving this. I literally I have no rational reason why this is yeah. like something I'm excited for this year. <laughs> like, no rational reason. Uh I mean you can be excited for it. Yeah. But to put it in your put it in your top three based on the concept alone is saying something. Right. For sure. Well wow. okay. Yeah. Well I'll I'll explain more on why other things were not in my top three later. As we get to them. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh my number three, and this any here's my top three. You could shuffle around any five minutes and I would I would agree with it. This number three could be number two, could be number one, well, and my number one could be number three, number yeah. two. That, and like, I guess similarly, all three of these. you could have taken like a top five of these, maybe top like seven or so, and yeah. everything but the top one could have been shuffled anywhere from two to seven. Yeah. My, my top three is basically my three ties for number one. Right. <laughs> I think for me. Yeah. Um, but if I had to order them, and I did for this little <laughs> silly <laughs> exercise... My number three is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Okay. That's, that's, um, I knew that was going to be in there somewhere. Yeah. It I, had to be. That, that would have been in that, that plethora of, um, options that were in the, uh, the, the running for me. Yeah. I just, um, like when I looked at this list to pick three, I was like, well, I have to have this one. I have to have this one. And I have to have this one. And then mm -hmm. I just stopped. I was like, yep, there it is. Yep. <laughs> like, that's got to be it. Um, I have talked about it on this podcast before. I love the Mission Impossible movies. I can't get enough of them. Tom Cruise is a weirdo, but uh, if he wants to learn how to fly fighter jets and helicopters and film himself doing it and then show it to me <laughs> and keep me on the edge of my seat, I am yeah. always going to be in. Um, just the trailer of him riding a motorcycle off of a cliff and turning it into a base jump and parachuting away. Yeah. It's like, that's insane. He's really doing it. And <laughs> I can't wait to be in a theater watching him do that. Like, I'm just, I'm smiling yeah. so big right now. I'm so <laughs> yeah. excited. If you're, watching, <laughs> if you're not watching, if you're not watching the pod, Mike is grinning like oh, a kid on I Christmas. Can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. Like a month or two ago, I rewatched all of them except two because I think it's bad. Um, yeah, I don't want to waste my time, but and I just was like, these just are just they just keep getting better. They're just so good. They're so good, especially the five and six, mm -hmm. just both knockouts. So, so good. So that's for, my that's my number three. For anyone who doesn't know, like my history with Mission Impossible, uh, it's extremely heavily influenced by Mr. Gibson himself, uh, <laughs> yeah. solely from the fact that I remembered watching the first one, and I thought mm -hmm. it was good, and I remember watching the second one, and I never watched another one until i was yeah. talking to mike and he was like oh the second one was complete shit the rest like they kept getting better after they that get better yeah. so i i still haven't seen three. Oh, really but i saw I, I it might not have been streaming or whenever i started redoing this or something yeah but i remember watching ghost protocol and then rogue nation and then fallout and then i was like huh okay these are really good these are for great. no yeah. reason <laughs> they're amazing <laughs> okay i'm in yeah three is really good yep uh they do weird like color timing on it and that gets distracting because mm -hmm. like you know early or like mid 2000s or whatever it was yeah. like, that's like a lot of all the movies were doing that um but man yeah it's so good like philip seymour hoffman is the villain yep like and he's one of the best villains ever he's so good so anyway Mission Impossible. Steve, what is your number two most anticipated film of the summer? My number two 
contrary to what most people are going to expect, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Hey, yeah. Well, so this wow. is this so is far, immediately both. with with both of my selections that's leaving at least two major blockbusters that should be on my top three. Well, I know what your equation. number one is. Yes. I know what your number one is, but I did not I would not have guessed either of these other two as being your your top two. So why yeah. are you so excited about uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem? Uh Ninja Turtles I have always been weirdly nostalgic about. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's weirdly because I am a child of the nineties. So yeah. <laughs> um like they've always been near and dear to my heart. Uh I think reading the last run in last year kind of reignited some I was like, sure. oh, you know, they still can tell good stories about and good deep heartfelt stories similar to like gritty and dark similar to like what they used to be i'm like oh okay cool but there's always this like this thought of when i think of the turtles i think of that cartoon that we grew up with yeah and like that's where i go back to and watching the trailer for this like recaptured that Mm -hmm. it kind of brought it back to okay they're they're bringing back the original not not the original turtles but like the original animated turtles original idea yeah of the turtle i feel like yeah. yeah like not eastman and laird but like the the first thing we saw in animation kind of that feel to it right and uh yeah, yeah refreshed animation you know modern look to it but that feel of hey these are literally like they put the teenage back in teenage mutant ninja turtles exactly yeah um yeah this is the first turtles thing that i've been excited about in a really long time like i don't remember i don't remember the last turtles thing that i was planning on going to see or give it any time at all really the 2012 maybe or 2008 reboot animated reboot was actually pretty good i almost that was the last time i was like oh maybe i'll go see that and i never did but i heard it was all right yeah um but uh yeah i i mean I'm excited to go take to take my son to see this for sure. Yeah. Um, and you know what I read I think, about this? I think today? that's actually part of it too. Is like, it's it's kind of in that wheelhouse of you know. I think I think I can take my son to this, and he would enjoy yeah. it, and it made it better for me. Yeah, I'll be shocked if that movie is PG-13. Right. I, it definitely seems like a PG jam. Oh yeah. Like Spider Verse. So, and they'll be smart if it is, because then more kids will go see it. They'll make a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Did you read? They announced who was doing the score for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. No. Who'd they get? Nine Inch Nails. Really? Trent, Trent Reznor, Reznor and himself. Atticus Ross <laughs> are doing huh. the score for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Yeah. Okay. Now, if that wasn't <laughs> on my top three, yeah, it's 100% know, right? my top three now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was like, oh, okay. Also, okay. taking a huge digression here, in hindsight, when when we were growing up in the 90s would you have ever expected uh the band that put out pretty hate machine no. <laughs> to <laughs> in the downward spiral to be scoring a ninja turtles movie yeah i was listening to my in high school um listening to the fragile over and over again i would not <laughs> yeah. have i would not have thought they would be scoring a ninja turtles movie um but when i you know but that was before i i think that was before he they did anything like that. Right. They, they, they've done the social network. They've done other mm, films as I well. I think around like then, was it one of the crows that he started with? There was one, I can't remember what oh, movie really? he started scoring. It was relatively early in, not, I think it was like one of the sequels. Um, oh, I don't remember that. But the first, the first yeah. one I remember knowing that it was him that, that was them Highway. doing the score. For, oh, Lost Highway. That's yes, what I was he thinking did music of. For Lost Highway. But that is more like Nine Inch Nails y lost high like music i think it's more like yeah yeah more musical yeah. than like a, a cinematic score or like yeah which the first one i knew of that was social network which he yep. won an oscar which they won an oscar for so um and he's done other stuff i know since then but oh, he did uh, yeah awesome he did the score for Watchmen. yes i knew there was a tv thing that i lo- i could not think of it but yes that's what it was yeah yeah genius pick for that yeah, no, he's uh, he's he's done some good things. It's a, it's almost like he's extremely talented and knows how to make music. <laughs> yeah, right. Go yeah. figure. <laughs> so, oh, girl with the dragon tattoo too. Ah, uh, yeah. Cool. Of course. 
There yeah, we he's go. like a David Fincher fan, I think. Hasn't he worked with David yep. Fincher a couple times? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Steve, Gone, my Gone number Girl, two. Same. What's that? Gone Girl as well. Oh, yeah. Gone Girl. Uh, my number two most anticipated movie this summer is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And I believe oh. that's going to be your number one. Is that It correct? will be, yes. Yes. Yep. So we may as well talk about we'll, it now since my number one is We may as well talk about next. it. Um, like I said, my top three are all really my ties for number one. So, uh, yeah, and especially I know I just mentioned last week that I rewatched the first one with my wife and son recently, and mm-hmm. I was like, man, this movie's good. I cannot wait for the sequel. And then all the first reactions came out this week, yes. and they're all like insanely positive. I don't know if anyone else has seen these. Like, go on Twitter, search a hashtag. I mean, don't look for spoilers, but like people are raving about Across the Spider-Verse being great. They stick the landing. They do it. They pull it off. It's the best spider-man movie i've ever seen it's the best animated movie i've ever seen i've seen so much like hyperbole right um directed toward this movie which is crazy because that's the same hyperbole that came out about the first one yeah (laughs) yeah yeah wild i'm i'm very curious to see if i think this is better than the first one right because it's it's so tough to beat but i feel like they certainly took their time making it um which gives me hope and all these reviews and everything makes me think it's possible. Yeah. That it could be a better sequel than the original. Which is which just happens. nuts to think. Nuts, but hey, I don't know. We'll yeah. have to see. We'll have to see. What else uh, is anything? Those reviews, like, that were the reactions that have come out, have those, like, gotten you more excited or is it just impossible like for you this is number one hands down for you no matter what or i, th- I think like... it was going to be hands i think it was going to be number one no matter what um but they definitely helped like it, yeah. it didn't it didn't hurt to see uh, it, it took a lot of that worry and that like uh can they reach that level they did or at least be close to the level they they got to with the first one yeah um i i mean i still remember the reaction the first time i saw that like into the spider verse it was just like i've never seen a better representation of like the spider-man ethos in film like miles or peter or anything like they just nailed it i feel like i agree with you which is wild and i think about this contradictory nature or contradictory uh thoughts that i have about this movie is that like I've said this a million times on this podcast. I prefer a street level friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah. I prefer Batman in Gotham city on the ground and not in space with the justice league. You know, like I like a down to earth superhero story, but this is the least down to earth Spider-Man story that is out there. Um, And it's my favorite Spider-Man movie easily, easily the best Spider-Man movie that they've made. I believe it's somehow the least and most Spider-Man thing that could possibly have come out. Yes. Yeah, it's wild. And I mean, unfortunately, I feel like it has led to more stories in comics and blah, 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 Spider-Verse things right. happening. And now Spider, I feel like we're teaching a generation of children that Spider-Man is a character that belong. that is there's thousands of different versions and he belongs in space and in multi dimensions when i'm just in my brain i'm like no no but he really should just be a guy in new york city struggling right. like that's who he needs to be right um, he needs to wrap the rhino up in some webs and then go back and fix things with mary jane <laughs> yeah and then and wonder how he's gonna pay his rent right exactly you know like um, and have Aunt may cook him dinner because that's yeah. what Aunt may does yeah um but it's so good that i can't like the first movie's so good that i can't I don't want I I, I yeah. say stuff like that, but I'm like, oh yeah, no, this is incredible. I don't want to take anything away from this movie because it's just a masterpiece. Yeah, um, I'm with you in both uh, both camps there. Yeah, it can somehow be um, two things at once. Yeah, yeah, and we will see, um, pretty soon, uh, what we think of it. And I'm sure we'll do a, a reaction because I'm pretty sure we're both gonna go see it as yeah. soon as we possibly can. I actually, um, yeah, I was, I'm like, because neck it this opens next week. Or this week, technically. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking to get tickets tomorrow. Um, they've only in the the theater near us. They've only they only have like four showings on Saturday, and I'm hoping that they open a few more so I can, you know, give my wife some more choices. Yeah. So I'm gone all weekend. So my goal oh. is to try and get in on a Thursday nighter. 
Oh, nice. Good luck to you. Like a okay. late Thursday nighter, and then yeah, wake up and drive to Maine because. Oh, that's right. I heard about that. We'll yeah. talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> um, Steve, I was able to guess your number one. Can you guess my number one? Well, see, there's either the. You can. Yeah. Okay. The Flash. <laughs> yes, the Flash. I yeah. I was like, it's either that or he's completely subverting yeah. expectations. I'm not because no, of the controversy yeah. and going indie, but yes. Yeah. No, the Flash. Yep. And uh, it's my number one for a number of reasons. The biggest one, the most obvious one, is I'm a big fan of the character. I've loved the Flash since I was a child, and they're finally making a Flash movie. Mm-hmm. Um, couple that with the fact that everything that I've heard about it, you know, similar to Spider Verse, every every review we've seen or first reaction have said that it's incredible. People are calling it one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. Like. I don't know. I kind of wish I didn't hear that one because <laughs> yep. now I'm like, my expectations are so high now, but also this movie was in development hell for so long. They went through so many directors and yep. so many canceled release dates and so many pushes and so many rewrites and so many new writers coming on board. Like they've been trying to make a flash movie for so long. And it's finally here. And not only is it here, it also has two different versions of Batman in it. One of them is one of my favorites of all time, Michael Keaton. There's just so much that's happening here. And and it supposedly is going to determine the direction for the DCU moving forward into the James Gunn, Peter Safran era of DC films. So all of that. And and the fact that I don't know how this movie is going to do. I'm just like, I'm I'm excited to see it myself personally. I'm also excited to see the reaction to it and to see how it does in the box office. And I guess yeah. we'll talk about that when we get there. But that personally, that's my, that's my number one. For oh, yeah. Reasons. And I, I had a extremely strong sense that that was going to be. Um, yeah, I know you did. Well, that's also as crazy as it sounds. That's the flesh is probably my number three but I yeah. knew you were going to put it on at some point. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah. ah, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll throw a bone to last voyage of the Demeter. Cause I'm weirdly excited about that movie. Yeah, no, I feel like anybody that anyone that's been talking about, whether it's just movies in general or nerdy genre movies like this, comic book movies, like yeah. everyone's got to be like, I can't wait to see this thing. Yeah. Good. You know, expectations Good, high, or expectations low. Everyone's got to be like, I can't wait to see what, the final result of this right. is i mean it's the yeah. standard there's no such thing as bad press like yeah the, and the fact that it's getting so much good press right well i mean wild. with all the stupidity of the past I, no but, i know yeah. that too yeah i know that too for sure um but uh i mean i guess we're already talking about the flash so we can talk about this stuff and i don't know why i said we'll talk about box office later but like how is all that stuff going to affect the 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 outcome of the of the movie like we talked about earlier you know, people that are, you know, in on film Twitter or comic book movie Twitter yep. or just like following these things, listening to podcasts like this one into, you know, movies in general. Yeah, we all know that this movie uh, that they've been trying to make a Flash movie forever and it took forever and they finally got one. But Ezra Miller started screwing things up and blah, blah, blah. We all we know all that. Right. But the general public doesn't know all that. And there are a lot of those people out there. I feel like people that are you and I, that we're in this all the time, looking yeah. at it, reading about it, thinking about it. We, t- we tend to forget that probably the majority of people out there don't know all of this stuff and they just want to, Oh, cool. That flash movie looks cool. Michael Keaton's back. I'm going to see that, you know, right. um, that kind of thing. So there's a, ver- there's a world where the flash makes a billion dollars and is hailed as one of the greatest superheroes all time by the general public and i feel like there's also a movie where it severely underperforms because it's not as good as it doesn't live up to the hype or it you know the ezra miller controversy is bigger than warner brothers thinks it is or we even think it is yeah um so that's part of i just don't know i don't know what to expect and like obviously there's like detract either people that are so disgusted by ezra miller they're like very loud about how we shouldn't go see this movie or there's you know snyder bros are being very loud about how you should boycott this movie because you know um zach snyder didn't direct it or whatever but like 
you know, are those just the loud people? Yeah. You know, are we, do we know about that because they're the loud ones? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, my, I, there's definitely people that know who the flash is from the CW show that watch it maybe casually, but don't know anything about Ezra Miller. So I'm just very interested to see how this movie does because it could go either way. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, that's another aspect of it too, is, you know, with the flash, the show coming to the end, this like, what was it? Is it this week or last week? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's right around the same time, which is wild. And then yeah. the flash movie coming out, it's like, did they like, is that going to, do people look at this as a capstone or <laughs> like how many right, people yeah. are going to be? Although I guess if you're this deep into the flash, like the Arrowverse flash, you're probably invested enough to realize that there's no relation, to, but yeah. And to know that there's a movie coming out in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's another thing I'll say about the flash. I won't say specifics, but I read a, there's a spoiler out there about the flash. A, I, I will say it, I, my guess from what I, I mean, I saw it in no uncertain terms. I know something. I know something. I know something about this movie. <laughs> I, was, I almost said it a different way, and I was like, no, 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 no. Um, my guess is that it is a cameo. And it's funny because I was just thinking a few days ago, the day that I saw this spoiler, mm -hmm. I was thinking about, okay, this is a multiverse movie. And there's, he's not just going to want, there's no way he's just going to run from one universe into a second universe, stay there, and then run back to the first universe. Like they're right. going to play with him either landing in or peeking in alternate, other alternate universes or realities. I guarantee you. Right. I was like, so that, I, I literally was like, wow. So that leaves the door open for like cameos. Like who else could we possibly see? And we, like we know, I mean, I guess we heard. We heard that both Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot shot cameos for The Flash, but we also heard that those may have been cut. Right. But I feel like anybody from that era is on the table. We are, my, we know Michael Keaton's going to be in it, but then I'm just like, whoa, well, is Michelle Pfeiffer going to show up in this movie as like Selena Kyle? Right. Um, you know, do you, who else do is you get Halle Berry like, as Selena Kyle? <laughs> yo, I thought about that. I was like, is there a version? Do we see George Clooney in a Batman suit? Right. Like, just like as a quick, you know, he looks through a door of the multiverse or whatever and just a right. quick cameo or val kilmer or something you know do we get something like that um the the one that i and that and my assumption is that the spoiler that i read is a cameo such as that right and i will not say what it is i wish i didn't i, I would wish i didn't know it. i would assume by what you're saying that the initials are gg and that he will be showing up no oh really no. See, I would have expected no. that in in the panning through the flashes. So no, I mean, I'm possibly suggesting that because I don't know if you remember this, but when the CW did their Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, Ezra Miller showed up as the Flash. Oh, really? Had seen with with Grant Gustin. Nice. Yeah, and I did not know that for a while. I was, and I feel like it's possible that that exact scene will be in this movie. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, they might know, just repurpose that. Maybe. Yeah, and maybe they won't, and it's just a little off thing, and for the CW, and that's fine too. But yeah, um, but no, it's no, that's you're you're incorrect. Oh, um, it's something that I never would have expected ever. Okay, and that's why I went. That's why I wish I didn't know it. Perfect. Yeah. Well, you but know what we do now. I, what's that? We know our top threes at this point. We know our top three. So what else is coming out this summer? Well, up Ooh, the, June. The the tipping tipping this off. Uh, actually, weirdly enough, tipping this off uh, because I'm going to add some TV in here because we oh, didn't okay. mention it, but there's a ton of like nerdery related TV coming out too. Yeah, uh, that's true. Next, nope, uh, four days ago we missed it. American Born Chinese debuted on Disney Plus. That's true. So that's right. Uh, and Michelle that's Yeo. that's based on either is that a graphic novel or an ongoing that they did. Um, that uh apparently got rave reviews and they turned it yeah. into a show so i have not had a chance to watch i assume you didn't either but uh i i did not yeah. but i i mean michelle Yeoh is amazing so. right and um uh katie kwan as well he's in that too yeah oh i didn't know that yep so amazing you know he well they they both are everything everywhere all at once so they sure are they can they be sure there are. um 
Uh, following that up is Transformers: Rise of the Beast, because wait. we need more Transformers movies. Oh wait, I thought you're still doing TV. Oh no, I'm. I was gonna intersperse the TV in with the. Okay, the well then stuff. we missed June second officially. June sec- the oh, yeah. picking June so, off right with Spider Man Across the Spider Verse comes yep. out on the second. I guess we already talked about, it, but. And um, uh, you know, as as is standard, release dates are listed, and they actually come out the day before them because the movies before, are yeah. weird. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are talking about the movie a bunch. But uh, then, like you said, on the ninth is Transformers: Rise of the Beast. Steve, I have not seen one Transformers movie in my whole life. I think I saw the OG, and then I. I yeah, I think, guess I've seen that. I think when I ruptured my Achilles in 2018, I accidentally watched one of the Mark Wahlberg one. Oh yeah, I forgot he's in one, isn't he? Yeah, I think I watched that. It might have been a different time I was sick or ill or incapacitated on a couch where I had a right. lot of time to watch things. Yeah. <laughs> and ran out of options. I don't I'm not in big into Transformers lore. I promise we won't talk about every movie this long. No. But um uh He promises, but we might. Yeah. I I'm not in Transformers lore. My understanding of Transformers is that they are robots in disguise and they disguise themselves as cars so that they can move about in our world undetected. Mm-hmm. That's what I remember from my childhood. Uh this movie has just giant robot animals. Yeah, so one that, thing that, that happens... then turn into giant robots. Right. <laughs> so like one, how, one you're thing really, that not happens... really hiding as a giant robot gorilla. Like yeah. I can tell you're not a real gorilla. <laughs> like, After what? we were kids, there was this whole Beast Wars thing. Yeah. Uh which I did not see, but it was a apparently widely successful cartoon that people were clamoring to make into one of the Transformers movies. And this seems to be it. Here we are. The best I've got. Here we are. So and then uh, okay, then on June sixth we have the uh we have season two season two of Strange New Worlds on June fifteenth. Oh, the uh widely praised Star Trek show. Absolutely. And I will I will also widely praise it because it was really good. Yeah, and that's the 16th, you said? June 15th. Oh, 15th. Well, a day after that, we're getting The Flash, which we just spoke about. Mm-hmm. Um, a cool horror movie, a horror comedy that I saw a trailer for called The Blackening. It looks really funny. And a Pixar, new Pixar movie called Elemental. So that's a pretty big that's a pretty weekend in weekend. the box office. Yeah. And I tend to think that The Flash is going to uh, win the weekend. Um Probably followed because, by Pixar. Yeah, um, but it, it's cool that there's three movies coming out the same weekend that are all very different. Yeah. So people do have options um, at the box office. And I think by the 16th, I mean, Spider-Verse will still be going strong, I think. Yeah. But it's possible by the 6th. Like, I feel like and, Spider-Verse is going to be number one at the box office probably for a couple of weeks until The Flash comes out. And The Flash will likely take it over but who knows if right it'd Spider-Verse probably go strong. flash then spidey at for third or for second weekend third weekend no that'd be third yeah. weekend yeah if if but, spider but again, holds on for third weekend then that'd be insane yeah it would but it, i think it's possible because yeah. like look at mario you know mario's a g-rated or pg yeah, animated PG-rated movie animated and like movie. we talked about last week like you know it's not just me and my wife going it's me and my wife and my kid like people bring their kids so they buy right. more tickets like it's you're yep. selling the families so spider-verse has a huge shot um no. and then bringing up no. the rear in june oh Before do you have a tv that. uh yeah. june 21st we have secret invasion oh that little right. marvel, marvel show that's dropping yeah. uh and then the 29th we have uh the witcher season three debuting oh so this is henry cavill's last season correct, correct. Yep. season three all right, cool, cool. Um, ending uh, ending June on the thirtieth is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Also, an animated film called Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken, which, which I've seen a couple trailers for that look interesting. I guess you know, so, it's like for a kids movie. Oh yeah. Uh, so for Andy, Andy did not make either of our top threes, which for no. the amount we've talked about that movie is mildly insane. Did the original like did the can reviews? temper your expectations on this at all no it's really just that i'm so out of my mind excited for the other three that this i think <laughs> indies indies probably number four for me yep. e- like easily if i made a fourth it would be indiana jones and the dial of destiny that's um, i would probably put it in you know it probably was four. like uh for for anyone listening the uh if if you yeah 
No, it'd be five because Demeter is still up there. So yeah, never mind. <laughs> Trying to do some math. Trying, I'm like, uh, yeah. If you're not yeah. watching the, if you're not watching the pod, you should have seen the smoke pouring from my ears there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, um, I'm pumped for it, but it's still like, still behind enough. It's behind enough because I, like, my top three, I am almost guaranteed that I'm going to love all three of those movies. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. the flash is the one that I main, like that's the, has the strongest question mark, but based on the trailers, based on the reactions, I right. feel like I'm probably going to like that movie. Indiana Jones. I don't know if I'm going to like this movie, but I'm very excited to see it. I think I'm going to like it and okay. I want to like it, but because like those, the, we talked about it. Was it last week or two weeks ago? We talked, we talked, ranked our Indiana Jones movies yeah. and talked about how people people's opinions vary wildly on a lot of the Indiana Jones movies. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, you can't say that this is going to be a surefire a plus for Indiana Jones fans even. True. Um, but it comes out June 30th and there's like other movies that come out, but then the next big movie is July 12th with mission impossible. Yeah. So there's no big movie coming out like the weekend before July 4th, like July 4th weekend, there's nothing. So I think Indy, I mean, the Flash will still be in theaters. All the ones we talked about will still be going, but like, Indy drops June 30th and then has all of July 4th weekend to like keep bringing people in. Yep. So I think it might do pretty well. No, I don't fun. know that it's. I don't think it's going to like blow expectations out of the water or anything, but I think it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we're not talking. You know, in, Indy's not going to be a billion dollar movie, but it's going to be pretty solid. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I do think Mission Impossible will overtake it yeah. regardless of where it is <laughs> oh yeah and book. especially yeah especially two weeks in like that's a big drop yeah yep yeah um, um in the just past mission impossible since unless we want to uh opine no, I, more on that we've already say. we've already yeah. both said we want to see this movie yesterday <laughs> yeah um what we do in the shadows season five is coming out july 13th you made five seasons of that already i believe so I oh thought it was season God. five that I saw. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. Oh, I got to start watching that show because I hear it's so good. But now there's five seasons. I'm almost. I literally just had that same. I was gonna say <laughs> brain thought, but uh, yeah. Um, the movie's great. I've seen the movie and it's exceptional. And everyone says the show is too. I just haven't. It's one of those things that. Yeah. You know, I know it's there. It's maybe someday, but there's just too much. I I've can't got a lot be of mad those. at myself for not watching every single thing um yeah yeah how about wow. the uh, 21st of july 21st is the big showdown between two very drastically different movies <laughs> which i'm both ex i'm excited I'm to see both, both of them yeah the 21st is barbie versus oppenheimer and Ooh, oppenheimer on top oppenheimer is the new chris nolan movie that i had no idea was even coming out until i saw the trailer for it and that yeah jumped it up the hype meter yeah it looks real good it looks real good barbie is another movie that i had no interest in whatsoever until i saw the trailer and it jumped it up the hype meter <laughs> i i uh if you had told me like a year ago that i'd be excited about a barbie movie uh, then yeah. i'd be uh, or as excited as i am <laughs> right <laughs> you're like, if you're i said insane. i was excited about a barbie movie i would have been lying to you blatantly yeah, to I your mean, face the <laughs> When I heard, whenever they announced that Greta Gerwig was writing and directing it, and that yeah. Margot Robbie was in it, I was like, "Oh, Greta Gerwig's gonna make. She's good. She makes good stuff." Right. So, um, she like if she's making this movie, then there's a chance I'm going to be interested in it. That was my first thought, and then the trailers are just so cool, so cool. Um, and it's I'm going to be very interested to see. Who makes which movie makes more money? Not that it matters. Like we have been so much, so many of us have been conditioned via like social media or like you know people yelling about movies online. Like you know that that box office determines uh, quality, and that's not true at all. It doesn't matter how much money money a movie makes. If you love it, you love it. That's the end of the story. But it is funny that these two wildly different movies are coming out the same weekend, and they're both like hits like they're not they're both mainstream big movies they're one of them's not like a lower budget thing or whatever they're both like going for it i am interested right. to see who comes out on top it's probably just going to come down to 
which one's longer, which I am guessing that Oppenheimer is a lot longer than Barbie. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who has not seen or heard any of the Barbie casting or hype or whatever. Uh, <laughs> you got a cast Sorry. list? I do. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Um, yeah. For for Ken alone, Ryan Gosling is Ken. Mm-hmm. Nakuti Gatwa is also Ken. And Simu oh. Liu is also Ken. I knew Simu Liu, yeah. Uh, various Barbies cast throughout the movie. Margot Robbie, uh, Emma McKay, uh, Kate McKinnon, mm-hmm. um, Issa Rae, Hari Neff, uh, Alexandra Ship. Yeah, there's there's a lot of them. Dua Lipa. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> yeah, there's some some serious range in the various Barbies, um, and uh, Will Ferrell is the toy company CEO. Oh, that's hilarious! So yeah, uh, Kingsley Benadir is in it. Like, there's Rhea Perlman. Oh like, really? Wow. <laughs> the the cast list is mildly ridiculous. Oh, cool, Michael cool. Sarah is in it as Alan. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. Anne, Anne Hathaway, Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren is narrating oh. it. Oh my god, incredible! So yeah, there's there's some some names in this thing, which is insane to think of. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to see what that movie is all about. Yeah, nobody um, has any idea what the movie is either. That's the. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the intriguing part. Is everybody's like, "What the hell is? How do you make yeah. a Barbie oh. movie?" Yeah, but we're all excited about it. Yeah. So, great. Um, um, any other TV in July? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, 27th? Do we have? Are we at the 27th yet? We're past the 21st, so yes. There we go. Uh, Twisted Metal. If we haven't talked oh, about video yeah. games, uh, there's somehow, uh, and the somehow will come back later when we talk about another video game movie, but uh, they're somehow making a Twisted Metal movie. The yeah. game from the original PlayStation about weird trucks. Uh, it was like a destruction racing game thing. Yeah, crashing into each other. Yeah, yeah. like uh, how that becomes a movie, I don't know. Like, Starring Captain America. Yeah, Sam Wilson. Mad Anthony Max Matthew. Fury Road again. I guess. I guess. I, I guess. So. Um, I will probably skip that one. Sorry, Anthony Mackie. Um, the twenty eighth of July is Disney's Haunted Mansion. They bought which they've already made a movie called Haunted Mansion, but this one uh, looks better. Although I feel like I haven't seen a ton of marketing for it yet, so yeah. I feel like maybe it's not good. I don't know. And also a horror movie called Talk to Me. I don't uh, think either of those will take over whatever Barbie or Oppenheimer is doing at the box office by the end of July. Um, but moving into August, you got one of Steve's faves kicking it off: uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem on the second of August. Um, and then the 4th of August, we got The Meg 2, a sequel to a movie about a megalodon eating people. This is a second movie <laughs> about a megalodon shark eating people. Um, first one I saw, and it was bad. So I will not be seeing The Meg 2. Steve, is there any TV in early August we should be aware of? No. There's only one no. show that I saw in August related to the, the, the general nerdery. And we don't have a date on that yet, do we? That is correct. Uh, for anyone who does not know what Mike and I are talking about, that is Ahsoka, the yes, uh, extremely extremely anticipated Star Wars show that will be dropping on Disney Plus. Um, for anyone who hasn't watched Rebels, this is a warning to go watch Rebels now. Yeah, because do it. it's so good. It's this is going to be season five of Rebels, basically, and it's going to be good. Yeah, I'm assuming they're going to do it in a way where you have watched rebels but it will enhance your viewing if you yeah, have watched definitely them. will not hurt yeah for sure um i've also i heard some unconfirmed reports that it's great also i just read oh, some rumors on twitter that early reactions to ahsoka are like this is dope we did a good thing um i like good things. On the el- yeah <laughs> speaking of uh weird Movie adaptations, August 11th is Gran Turismo. I haven't seen anything about that. And I so, can't, that's just a racing game. Yeah. So I don't know if you characters. if you ever heard, uh, they actually, apparently it's based loosely on a true story. They took the game and players that were extremely like top, top of the world at the game. Yeah. And 
tried to turn them into like actual car racers because mm. they've you know at this point they've memorized the actual tracks and oh, okay. whatnot and uh, apparently this is the true story of what happened to them when they did that i don't know oh i don't know if it was successful i don't know if it was unsuccessful i didn't do the research but apparently that was what it was based on i guess that's slightly more interesting than i would have thought right that's rather than just a racing game that has no plot and you literally just race races right yeah, yeah. um and that is coming out the same day as last voyage of the demeter steve's number three for august um and another one i'm s- and coming up that i'm surprised did not make any of our lists i guess because we had to cut it to three i had to cut it to three so august 18th blue beetle and a blue beetle probably be a number five if i was making the top yeah, five i'd probably, I'd probably throw it at like six yeah yeah and this is another one that i'm very interested to see how it does i mean the trailer looked good there's a lot of great feedback from the trailer when it came out yeah but I don't know how many people really know about it. How many people care about this character? Like it's going to be, I think blue beetle is going to be a lot of word of mouth and yeah. like reviews when reviews start coming out. Um, I mean, it's first uh, Hispanic led superhero movie. So I think it deserves to do well for sure. Um, and it just looks good. So yeah. uh, and it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see if, if people don't go see the flash, like, will they still go see blue beetle you know what i mean is the flash if the flash doesn't do well is that a nail in the coffin for, for blue beetle or not Probably. because it's not like super intertwined but yeah i don't know I, we shall see yeah we shall see so that's our summer movie preview everybody thanks for sticking through that moving into comics this week was something we should have talked about last week but the eisner nominees are out the eisners are you know, basically the Oscars, but for uh, comic books. And there, there's a ceremony every year at San Diego Comic Con to announce the winners. And if the writer strike is still going on, this might be the uh, biggest thing to happen at San Diego Comic Con <laughs> yeah. this year. Which um, so Comic Con is the 19th through 23rd this year of July. Of July, yeah. Um, so we're not going to read all of the categories. I probably even picked too many to read. We're just going to read some of the big ones. Not going to read all the nominees. Um, but, uh, for best single issue or one shot, we got Batman, one bad day, the Riddler by Tom King and Mitch Jarrett's Mary Jane and black cat beyond by Jed McKay and CF Villa moon Knight, black, white, and blood. Number three by Tom Brevoort star Trek 400 edited by Heather Antos and a vicious circle book. Number one by Matson Tomlin and Lee Bergermo. Um, and yeah. I've heard of most of those books. I've, the only one I've read is Batman One Bad Day of the Riddler, and I thought it was incredible. So, yes, I can certainly see this being nominated for Best Single Issue. Have you read any of these? I've read the same one that you have. And oh, nice. it nice. 100% deserves to be nominated, and if the other four are of that quality, we should probably grab them. Yeah, that's a, a, a cool thing about reading the Eisner nominations. It's like, like, oh, these things that I missed, apparently they're exceptional. Right. <laughs> I need to go watch them. I mean, that's how I ended up reading uh, the Many Deaths, Many Deaths of Layla Starr yeah, uh, yeah. by Ram V last year. Was I saw it on right. the nominee list. I was like, oh, okay, I'll check that out. It's it phenomenal. Yeah. A um, lot of big names in the best continuing series category. Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky, Marco Cicchetto, and Rafael De La Torre. Department of Truth by James Tinney IV and Martin Simmons. Philadelphia by Rodney Barnes and Jason Sean Alexander. Nice House on the Lake, also by James Tinney IV. I didn't realize you could get two nominees in the same category. I guess oh, why he not? did last year, They're too. different books. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He did. And they're different books, so it makes sense. Um, so that's Tinian and Alvaro Martinez Bueno. Nightwing by Tom Taylor and Bruno Redondo. It's She-Hulk by Rainbow Row, Roger Ante- Antonio, and Luca Mascara, and Tashaki Miyazawa. Um, so I knew there was a new She-Hulk book uh, that came out last year, but I hadn't really heard much about it, good or bad. I think they put it out to like have something in conjunction with the show when that was on. Yeah, I did not but... expect it was going to be an award-nominated book, and now no. I may have to find out what's going on there. Yeah, for sure. Same. The same happened. Was it last year 
with the Black Widow series got nominated for Eisner, and I started. Yeah, I, I think picked so. up a, a yeah, couple of issues, and I was like, oh, this is great. Can confirm from um, what I've read that Daredevil run is phenomenal. I know. I really got to start reading that, even though I know some of the stuff that happens in it, but still, I love Daredevil. Uh, best limited series, Animal Castle by Xavier Dorison, Felix Delep, and translation by Ivanka Hanneberger. Batman One Bad Day, the whole series. You know, eventually they're probably going to put out a collected edition of all of those. They're going to have to. Right? They yeah. have to, yeah. Um, edited by Dave Wildgaz and Jessica Burby. Human Target by Tom King and Greg Smallwood. I can't wait till they put out a full volume of that. Yeah, I'm going to so. buy it immediately. Uh, Miracle Man by Gaiman and Buckingham. The Silver Age by Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham. And Superman Space Age by Mark Russell and Michael Allred and Laura Allred. Um, I've read... All the One Bad Days, great. I've read a couple Human Targets. They're incredible. Uh, Superman Space Age, I've read half of, and it is also great. I haven't read Miracle Man. I haven't read Animal Castle, but clearly we're in... Yeah. yeah Batman and Human Target were both company. phenomenal. Um, yeah. Miracle Man, I didn't know existed somehow and should probably pick that up. Yeah, no. Yeah, there's an... Um, uh, like it was like Gaiman, a on-again, Gaiman off-again thing. A Silver Age-style... Yeah, I should definitely look at that. They, I mean, they wrote it for a while. They did an, an initial series, and then either it just got it stalled out or it got canceled. Yeah. And this is them like this Picking is them being brought up. back to finish okay. their finish their series, I guess. Um, best writer, Grace Ellis for Flung Out of Space. Uh, have not heard of that one. Um, uh, no Slouch, Tom King for Batman Killing Time, Batman One Bad Day, Gotham City Year One, The Human Target, Supergirl One of Tomorrow, and Love Everlasting. Mark Russell for Traveling to Mars, All-Star Squadron, Superman Space Age, James Tinian IV for House of Slaughter, Something's Killing the Children, Nice House on the Lake, etc. And Chip Zdarsky for Stillwater and Daredevil. So a lot of big names on that list. The only one I'm not familiar really with is Grace Ellis. Um, and the other ones are... Uh, names i've heard a lot yeah and i mean as weird as it sounds for grace ellis to be nominated just for flung out of space um that i i guess that means that's probably a book well worth picking up absolutely because yeah that's right yeah, everybody else is putting the- out everything under the sun zadarsky they don't even mention that he's you know penning batman also writing batman yeah <laughs> i know yeah. so yeah uh it's a good point steve um, best penciler, inker, or penciler and inker team: Jason Sean Alexander for Philadelphia, uh, Alvaro Martinez Bueno for The Nice House on the Lake, Sean Phillips for Follow Me Down and The Ghost in You, uh, Bruno Redondo for Nightwing, and Greg Smallwood for The Human Target. That's um, Smallwood art and Human Target is. I was just yeah. gonna say Human Target is my pick for this. Yeah. It's so good, it's so good. Nice House on the Lake was solid looking but i there's something about the way like the human target the way and yeah, no without seeing it Dude, like the, it's think, hard to explain yeah. i will send you a twitter thread if i can find it um that it's him talking about how he chose to do the art for human target oh really? how, like what nice. what it, what he based it on and like the techniques it's very interesting yeah because really cool. it's definitely it's it's its own animal and it's really yep. like if you don't see it, it it is hard to describe especially for someone not versed in art <laughs> yeah for sure uh best cover artist my girl jen bartell for she hulk bruno redondo for nightwing alex ross for astro city fantastic four and black panther Sana Tadaka for Monstrous and Zoe Thorogood for Joe Hill's Reign. Zoe Thorogood is someone that has blown up in comics in the last couple of years. And she's got two self penned and drawn books. Um, something like Alone at the Center of the Earth. And I can't remember what the, oh, the um, Impending Blindness of Billy Scott. They both were like widely praised oh, okay. books. Um, so I feel like I got to pick those up, start reading, especially she's getting nominated for Oscars now. So she's certainly no slouch. Yeah. Um I mean Alex Ross is always gonna get nominated for this because it's yeah. Alex Ross. Yeah. Um, if you're listening to this, you you don't know who Alex Ross is, look up his work. It is photorealistic. Yeah, it's, it's great just paintings that are incredible. Yeah. Uh um, Redondo on Nightwing has done some solid stuff, but yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't seen Bartel's covers for She Hulk, but I mean she's she a great artist. She's so. a great artist. I'm shocked that um 
Jenny Frizen hasn't didn't get any nomination I, this year because she she's, wasn't nominated the last couple of years either, was she? She's just one of the best yeah. cover artists working, I think, right now. She's every I buy books that just have her art on them in the, yeah. in the cover to, <laughs> yeah. to just because I want uh, it. It's Jesse and I pretty. were talking about that down at the shop the other day. We can't yeah. remember what it was I grabbed and I was like, I I can't pass it up. It's Poison Ivy or something. It might have been yeah, Poison that, Ivy covers. It might have been might have been one of the Poison Ivy covers. I started um, reading Ram V's Catwoman because she was doing covers for it. And I just picked one. I was like, this is the gorgeous cover. I need to own this book. And I was like, oh, this is really great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I should read well, it was uh, this yeah. week I picked up a Silk number one because uh, it was a Peach Momoko cover. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, you know, Momoko, I'm usually like extremely warm or extremely cold on. Yeah. And this one hit me and I was like, yeah, I'll grab that. What the hell? <laughs> nice. Um, so that's all the full uh, categories we're going to read, but I did want to shout out that uh, one of the nominees for best short story is uh, the late great Kevin Conroy mm. and his writing partner Jay Bone or artist Jay Bone um, in DC's Pride um, 2022 one shot. His short story Finding Batman about him being an openly gay actor in Hollywood and how um, he just came into the role of Batman and uh, how it affected his life it was really a uh, beautiful story and um you know knowing that he just uh passed away this year i think it's um a wonderful honor to him for him to get nominated sir absolutely um this week in your local comic book store you will have such titles as alien number two amazing spider-man number 26 this is the landmark death issue yes spider-man 26 that no one's happy about no nope. yeah, great not even in her own book come on it's so stupid Yep. Um, Avengers Beyond number three, Blue Period number thirteen, Carnage number thirteen, Catfight number one, DC Pride two thousand twenty three one shot comes out this month just in time for Pride Month. Uh, Deadpool number seven, Detective Comics one thousand and seventy two, Edge of the Spider Verse number two. Shocked that there's a Spider Verse book coming out this week. I wonder why. Hmm, um, Gargoyles number six, Icon versus Hardware number three, John Carpenter's Tales of Science Fiction, The Envoy number two. Uh, hard not to uh, be interested in anything with John Carpenter's name in it. I feel like uh, Local Man number four, Night Walkers number four, Power Girl special number one. Cool that Power Girl's getting a new book. Punisher number 12, Spider-Man 2099, Dark Genesis number 5, Star Trek Annual One-Shot, Star Wars Dr. Afra number 32, Star Wars Sana Staros number 4, Street Fighter number 6, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Saturday Morning Adventures number 1. Seems like a possible uh, kids book. Yeah. Uh, Venom Lethal Protector number 3, and X-23 Deadly Regenesis number 3. Steve, before we talk about comics, I have a question for you. X-23 for a while was Wolverine. Why don't they just still call her Wolverine like they do with like Miles and Peter? Why can't there just be two Wolverines? Um, They do sometimes, Why do they and then they don't, her... and then they do, and oh, then okay. they don't. It's kind of one of them. I feel like it's bullshit that they started calling her X-23 again and didn't well, just let her continue to be Wolverine. I think the only reason that X-23 Deadly Regenesis is titled that is because there's an ongoing Wolverine right now. Because Ben Percy's mm. writing a Logan book titled Wolverine, and it's an ongoing, so this is to, to differentiate. Because mm. in the actual okay. in the actual X runs, they've been referring to her as Wolverine sometimes. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. Fine. That makes me feel better then. Yep. Okay. I thought about that too when I saw it. I was like, hmm, wonder why they're doing that. And then I was like, oh yeah, Percy's got the the mainline mainline yeah. Wolverine run going. So. Um. How's this list look? You buying any of these? Have you bought anything recently? Have you been gifted any uh, collections of <laughs> X-Men runs lately from good friends of yours? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't I don't know who you could possibly be talking about, Mike. Uh, someone showed up on my doorstep the other day. <laughs> I got a wonderful yeah. text. Hey, are you home? I've got a present for you. Yep. Yeah, and I sure did. I found, I mean, I did ask you, uh, for comics info, but I'm gonna jump into this yeah. story that I'm go for it, man. It's great. I had I had the the comic book collector's dream come true. I should oh I meant to I should have brought it over so I could hold it up. Um, you know the if if you're into comic books, your dream is to like be just at a random flea market or garage sale and be flipping through comic boxes and find 
whatever action comics number one or yeah. amazing fantasy 15 or something and be like oh this is uh what this is a dollar i'll give you a, I'll give you a dollar for this yeah i'll give you two um, <laughs> yeah hey i'll give you two uh i was at a garage sale um this week and i found uh the first appearance of bishop um x-men i don't even remember the number first right. appearance of bishop uh for 25 cents and i got that and a number of other um older uh marvel books it was all marvel stuff yep. uh, there was graphic mostly novels, there was mostly trade, x books trade. yeah did you go i end up going oh yeah we went oh, over amazing i uh nice. i grabbed um i grabbed all the trades for wolverine and the x-men and uh oh yeah i just i don't know why i love that run but i do um oh, great and then a couple of like individual floppy covers like um I grabbed 279, which was a Colossus cover that I had as a kid. Oh, great. And it was like, the one I own is like ripped. And I was like, oh, pristine cover. Yes, I'll grab that. Yeah, I wish I had had, um, I should catalog, you know, a few, um, you know, two years ago or whatever, my basement flooded and some of my comics got damaged and I've replaced some of them, but some of them I haven't, but I should keep a running list of the ones I haven't replaced because they had like, uh, w- they had books that I know that I ha- I own. Yeah. But I was like, Ooh, wait, did that get damaged? Should I buy that replacement for this? But I couldn't. Yeah. I, I didn't have time to like flip through all the long boxes, which would have been right. But I found like that. I think it was like uncanny to say uh, about two seventy to two eighty, And I just grabbed all of them. Mm-hmm. It was like here. Oh, awesome. I'm buying these. Yeah. <laughs> All the all the single issues were twenty five cents, and all the collected trades were two dollars. <laughs> it was so, great. It so was Mike great. shows up on my door with the first five volumes of the Claremont run. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he he hands them to me, and I'm just a kid in a candy store, like, but I well, thank you. <laughs> yep, I was like, here you go. I got first appearance of Bishop in my car right now. I gotta go home. <laughs> I gotta go yep. bag and board this immediately now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. So. Yeah, that was uh that was quite the we I I was literally on my way to go camping. And yeah. uh Mike called and went there and was like, uh, I'm gonna have to grab some of these because well, I'm gonna have to grab some I, of these. I when I was there, I almost called you to be like, Come here right now. You need to come here right now. <laughs> please please come here now. <laughs> come here come here yesterday. Yeah. So. I just every every book I flipped past was like Steve needs to know about this. Steve needs to know about this. Steve needs to know. I would um, be remiss if I didn't say that I yeah. asked what they wanted for the full collection. Really? Oh, <laughs> and wow. then I also realized that my wife would shoot me if I walked back with four yeah. long boxes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, about yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Also, after I looked up some stuff, what they wanted was well under what I could have like. Oh, I'm sure it was. I took I bought six individual books for them on all of them. I, you know, I just looked them up real quick and this is yeah. like, if they're in pristine condition, all of them are like between 50 and $80. Like right. that first appearance of Bishop is at least an $80 book. If it's in prime condition, can't say this one's in prime condition. It's not bad, but it's not a, it's not a nine. I don't think. Yeah. Um, no, but even uh, the ones that I yeah. grabbed. Um, Oh, and who, yeah. know, who knows what that's, they had that somebody that's bought why before we got was there. Gone. 282 was the first appearance of bishop which is what you got that's what it was wait what was the difference 282 yeah yeah, yeah. in that run that i grabbed i was like why is 282 missing now the oh. pieces come together <laughs> I'm like oh yeah because it's at my house <laughs> oh that's great yeah yep. so 279 oh, three before that was it, the covers colossus uh punching professor x Oh yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, was there. Yeah. So yep. that was uh, that's one of my that was one of the the one that I was talking about. Yeah. Awesome. So, oh yeah. So cool. Uh, great day all around for uh, for me and Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Our comic collections. Um, but that's all I got. No one shots tonight. Like I said, it was super light news week. So uh, hopefully there'll be stuff to talk about next week. At the very least, uh, we'll be able to um do a review of Across the Spider Verse. Absolutely. Yeah. so that's all i got yeah if that's all we got then uh i would say you should probably like subscribe find us on the socials leave us a review on apple Podcasts. leave us a re- review on youtube it helps us out on both platforms um if you want to find it send us an email uh, uh you can the do multiverse that. at gmail.com 
Yep. Um, my my brain was like, is it multiverse report or the multiverse report? What is <laughs> it? What do I say? Um, and yeah, uh, check us out, themultiversereport.com, and uh, we'll be talking to you, I'm sure. That's right. And until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the multiverse. <laughs>